How's it going guys, Chaos Prime here, and it seems Bungie has finally released the first Forge exotic, Le Monarch. As you can see on screen with their preview trailer, it does look quite enticing, but the question is, is it any good? First of all, how do you actually get this weapon? Well, Bungie have confirmed that in order to get this weapon, it has a chance to drop from your weekly powerful engrams that come from the forges. Yes, that means you have two chances a week, unless your other characters can actually hand in powerful engrams. Now, for me, when I went to the forges to complete it on my second character, I didn't get the option to create another powerful reward. I'm not sure if this is a bug or not, but as it stands right now, you get two chances a week, possibly more, but repeating the forge for these weapons is pointless and it will not drop. If anyone has had this drop, outside of their powerful weekly rewards or their powerful ballistic reward do let me know in the comment section below as i would be very interested in knowing this right so on to the weapon review because i was one of the lucky few to actually get this weapon let's first start by looking at the weapon it has poison arrows arrows fired quickly after a full draw become poisonous arrows precision hits with the poison arrows spread poison to nearby enemies you have natural string, which gives you increased accuracy, handling speed and stability, compact arrow shaft with increased capacity, and finally snapshot sights for faster aim. So this is pretty much the weapon, but the poison arrows is where this is at, and it pretty much acts like the form as you're going to see in some gameplay footage up ahead. Now, the Monarch weapon itself is actually fun to use. It's a good weapon, it's a good crowd control, and it does relatively good damage. It's also good when a bunch of enemies are clustered for you to damage that AoE poison around, but it's no fawn, and it's no game changer. The fact is, it does good damage, and it is good for PvE, but does it really command a slot in your special ammo slot? Will it replace your shotgun for those heavy damage bursts? The answer is no, sadly. It is good weapon, and if you're fighting like a hundred thrall or something, this is amazing. But then again, so is your single melee from a sentinel titan, so is your single grenade from a sentinel titan, so is the graviton lance with its cosmology. So, essentially, it doesn't really give you something that the others don't. It does look cool, and it does play well. The actual full charge does take a little while and it's for this reason why I believe this weapon was designed for hunters in general. Hunters have the Oath Keepers exotic which I don't have access to but I have seen it being used on one. The full charge is pretty much instantly ready and it is pretty much god tier on a hunter. It is pretty much designed for hunters and for that exotic to go hand in hand. Warlocks and Titans pretty much miss out on this weapon. However, if you do want to use it, don't think that you would be actually diminishing your team's chances. It's a solid weapon. It does great damage on precision hits, and the poison effect doesn't just have to land on headshots, it can land on body shots as long as you're getting the full charge and releasing the arrow at the perfect time. Right, with the PvE implications out the way, and the fact that we've agreed that it is a solid weapon and that it does have a place in the PvE world just won't replace anything with great power. Let's move on to the PvP stats, which is what most people here are interested in. So I have tested this out with a 6 and 7 resilience titan and also a 5 resilience titan with the 5 varying ever so slightly. But for the purpose of the video it is a 6 and 7 resilience. So quick draw as you will see will do a 61 damage to the body with a 91 damage to the precision. Now this is pretty standard and I think this is fine. Basically you're just tapping the trigger and firing a loose arrow without any charge. So those damage reports are pretty solid and consistent. If you overcharge the bow you get a 95 damage to the body and then that's followed up with a 142 damage to the precision headshot. Again, this is good damage. There is no poison effect here as it was overcharged. In order to get the poison to proc, you do need to get a perfect charge. Now let's move on to the perfect charge. The perfect charge body shot is a 101 
compared to the 95 deaths from the overcharge, so you get 6 extra damage. However, because of the poison triggering, you also get 24 points of damage additional, which takes it to 125. This is a whopping 30 damage more. Now, if you look at the precision headshot, and this is where things differ slightly, it goes from 142 damage to 151. And again, you get 24 points of damage ticking with the poison, which knocks it to 175. In order to take a guardian down, you do need 200 points of damage. Now, I appreciate in the past in Destiny 1, the fawn was pretty much hated upon because you'd pretty much tap it twice and then run away because, well, the poison was going to kill him anyway, and this created much controversy. However, with the bow, and unless you're playing on a hunter who can pretty much hold that perfect charge for a much longer duration, if not indefinite, this bow handicaps you extremely because the perfect charge window is really small. So when you're going up against stuff like the Telesto or a shotgun or pretty much anything else, this weapon in PvP is just not gonna cut it. Again, on a hunter, you can pre-charge and hold it, and it is a bit more viable. But, based on those damages, I honestly expected the perfect charge to at least take the person down, and it didn't. 175 points is nothing to grouch at, don't get me wrong. Simply switching to another weapon or firing quickly again will pretty much take them down. Even a quick draw will do it. It's only 25 points of damage that's needed, so pretty much anything at that point will defeat the Guardian you're facing. However, those damage numbers aren't that great, and in my opinion, they should have gone a little bit further. The precision charge for the perfect headshot should have been a one-shot kill. It's a bow, it's powerful enough, and the fact that you have to aim it at full charge and perfect charge you know, it's rewarding to get that headshot. It's pretty much like a sniper. It should one shot, but the body shouldn't, and it doesn't, and it takes a little more than I thought it would, but that's fine. And honestly, I'm a little disappointed in this weapon. For PvE, it's a nice novelty weapon to have around and shoot about, but in PvP, I just simply don't see this standing a chance against the big wigs out there you know when you're using a shotgun the telesto when you're using pretty much any fusion rifle this weapon just and then you have the added bonus of flinch you shoot someone with the bow and they're flinching all over the place it's much like a sniper it's just unrealistic to assume that this has a place in pvp don't get me wrong this can be very lethal in pvp you don't always have full health, and for those that have a little bit less than full health, this will take them down. No two ways about it. But for those that don't and have a full health, and if you're going into a one-on-one -on -one combat and trying to get that precision shot from people jumping around and moving around, I just don't feel it's rewarding enough. So overall, unlike my Blast Furnace review where I was completely blown away by that weapon, this exotic for me on a titan is extremely underwhelming for a hunter with oath keepers i can see this being semi-decent half decent fun to use and possibly somewhat usable in crucible in pve it is just there it's a good ad clearer but it, if you have a titan that's sentinel and using the new class and can just punch their way through and explode everything. If you have a Graviton Lance, it pretty much does what this does just better, honestly. And for that reason, I think this weapon is underwhelming. It is nice to have, it is one for the collection, and I am using it right now and having a lot of fun with it in PvE. But for PvP, I will not be using this weapon. I just don't feel it has enough there to make it worthy and make it useful enough to replace my other choice weapons in that slot. Well guys, I'll let the PvE video play out a little bit more because I think that gives you guys a better view and understanding of this weapon. It's a solid PvE weapon, a pretty underwhelming PvP weapon. I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of the weapon. And until next time, Guardians, 
remain legend.